Good morning everybody and today we are going to be going over liquidity provision, DLMMs, and Meteor specifically. So what is a liquidity pool? Liquidity pool is a pool of assets to trading pairs. So let's say you have Solana and USDC. Having this pool of assets is what allows a market to be had so people can swap the Solana for the USD and the USD for Solana, but you, this is for every asset. Now, what Meteora allows us to do is it allows us to create our own liquidity pools or add to existing ones. And the unique thing about Meteora is their dynamic li liquidity pools, not constant liquidity pools. And we're going to get into the difference between that in a minute, but let's jump right into it. So we're going to be here on Meteora, and the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to sign into our wallet as you normally do whenever you connect to a website in crypto. So as you'll see here in the top right, you're going to see the soul in my wallet. Now let's get into it. So we're going to start out with the dynamic liquidity pool. The difference between dynamic liquidity pools, DLMMs, which stand for dynamic liquidity market makers. The difference between that and a CLMM is that the dynamic liquidity pools actually increase fees as the volatility increases so as the price the price changes increase so let's say instead of going from one percent daily changes to two percent daily changes in the underlying asset the fees will increase with that as well so let's go ahead and jump in here and look at an example we'll look at the jupe to solana pool and what we are going to see on this amazing ui that they've created is that on the left hand side you'll see there are eight bins which are basically just collections of the assets. So you'll have X amount of jupe and soul in one bin, X amount of jupe and soul in another bin, yada, yada, yada. The base fee is the minimum fee that you will get. So the minimum fee in this pool is going to be 0.05%, and the max fee is 10%. The protocol fee is 0%. What does that mean? That means Meteora is taking none of the fees that you are gaining, which is huge. A lot of times when you're going on exchange and making a trade, they take fees, so your PL is actually lower and you have to increase your profitability to make up for the fees. In this case, Meteora takes 0%. And it also, these bins and the way they have it set up is that these are zero slippage bins, which actually helps with price stability. And for on the trader end, the more liquidity going into these pools, the less slippage when they make a trade, which is huge. So when you're providing liquidity into these things, you are not only helping traders, but you are helping yourself by earning the fees. So you're also going to see the dynamic fee, which is basically the average of where it's at. It's just slightly over that base fee right now. Uh, 20, in 24 hours, Meteor in this pool has pulled out three th almost $3,000 worth of fees and that is fees going to the liquidity providers okay that's just across the entire platform in this specific pool all right so let's go ahead and jump right into it and let's create our own liquidity pool in this jupso pair so we're going to go right here and say add liquidity and i only have a small amount of jupe and soul in here so i'm going to do max and what it will do is, since I have autofill toggled, it's going to make a balanced deposit. Now, why does Meteora automatically set you up for a balanced deposit? Because if you put in less jupe than you put in Seoul in US dollar value, you're going to have an imbalanced deposit and you're setting yourself up to get impermeable loss. What's impermeable loss? Impermeable loss is when most of the time it happens when you have an unbalanced deposit, so you have more solar, more Jupiter than you have of the other asset, and traders arbitrage that difference, and you lose the upside, and you actually end up with more than the other, and you're basically losing money, to keep it simply. So they automatically set you up for a balanced deposit, and then they have multiple strategies that they go through. So you'll see that you can select your volatility strategy here. The first one that they set up is spot, which is the traditional. It's going to be an even across the board distribution of the assets. So you're going to see the bins here. Each of these bins represents a pool of Jupe and Soul and what price it's at. So this is in terms of Solana to Jupe price. So right here, the one I have toggled is 0.004 Solana equals one Jupiter. Okay. 
and then it tells you how much jupe is in each one of them, okay? If I did it with this amount. So let's say if I put in 100, it would say there's going to be two jupe in each of them across these, all right? So, if I wanted to switch it from spot and not have it be evenly distributed, what I can do is do a curved, and this is more concentrated at whatever the market price is at the given time, and then it tapers out as Solana price goes higher and Solana price goes lower. Bid ask is, it is a smaller distribution, less assets are going to be around the market price, and there's going to be more on either end of a lower Solana price and a higher Solana price. Now, why would you do the bid ask? Well, you would do the bid ask if you're trying to DCA in and out of a position. So if I wanted to sell more soul as Solana goes higher and get more Jupiter as Jupiter goes lower in accordance to the Solana price, I would do more of a bid ask. But if I wanted to do just, if I wanted to just harness more fees and do that and get money that way, I would do more of the spot and an even distribution across the assets. But let's say I have my hand and like I have a pulse on the market and I know in my heart that Solana is going to go up. So what I will actually do is concentrate my pool at Solana with Solana at a higher price range. Okay, so I can only do it when Solana goes up over here. Okay, and then my pool will only be active when the price hits those targets. Okay. My pool will be out of range and not earning fees when the price is outside of the range that I've selected here. Now, what happens if you do a smaller, okay, let's see, I'm, if I bring in both sides here, I'm making a narrower price range. So if I narrow the price range here by toggling this, what happens here is I will earn more fees when it is condensed into this range but I'm more likely to have to monitor the liquidity pool at all times because if the price goes out of that range, well, what will happen is, is let's say Solana price goes up, it's going to sell all of my Solana and I will only be left with the Jupiter, okay? And then I'm not earning fees anymore and it's all over here. And you might incur in premium loss because you might have been making more money as Solana keeps going up if you were just holding the Solana. So what you would have to do is constantly be rebalancing, adding Solana to the pool, changing the price range, or you can stack these and continue. So if I create this pool here, what I can do then is let's just create this pool. I'm going to just turn it into a normal one here. Okay. So let's say I create this pool right now. Add liquidity. Boom, boom. All right, if I want to add to that same position in a different price range, what I'll do here is I will hover over it. So now let's see the curve. Let's say I'm going to add 10 so Okay, so you'll see the overlay of the curve. Right now you're seeing where my, my price is currently stacked. If I do the curve, instead of it being even, now you'll see that it is unevenly distributed but it's stacking where there's more liquidity on top of it already. So you're going to see, it's going to show you a visual representation of what the impact will be of you adding a different pricing strategy to the same liquidity pool. Now, if you didn't want to do this and you wanted to just set up a different pool, what you would do is you would just go to add new position and then you can start from scratch and create a different pool. All right. And let's say you are done, okay, you finish this, you've been letting it work for a little bit, and you want to claim your fees, and you would also like to close the entire position entirely and get your money out back into your Phantom or Soulflare wallet. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that right now. What you're going to do is go up top, you're going to see it's automatically updating in basically real time uh, your liquidity and the fees that you are earning. So what we're going to do to close out the position is we're going to claim all the fees, Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what we're going to do here is click on withdraw, 100% withdraw, we're going to draw the liquidity, oh, let's cancel that out actually, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit withdraw, 100%, 
and we are going to withdraw and close the position. Now we've got it back in our wallet. Let's see here. Yep, the Solana is back in our wallet, right where we left it, along with the Jupiter. Okay, so that's the DLMMs on Meteora, but Meteora does not only do that. Meteora also does pools with farms where you can get the provide liquidity to a liquidity pool and then actually stake the liquidity pool token to earn even more fees. So why don't we go ahead and show you how to do that. So let's go to pools. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to click on pools with farms because that's what I just spoke about. So we're going to go ahead and do the pools with farms. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. And up top, you'll see what, what the overall platform has done in the past 24 hours on these pools. Okay. And so since I have soul and B soul, what I would like to do is find the B soul soul pair. It's going to show you the 305 day yield. And what this is, is it's your returns based on 24 hour trading fees and lending yield. Okay. So I'm going to click over here. Boom, boom, boom. It shows you the overall platforms, 24 hour fees, yield, yada, yada. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an even withdrawal again, or an even deposit again, balance deposit. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a balanced deposit. One soul, 2.2 soul. Why is it, it seems like this would be unbalanced? Well, it's in accordance to the pool's breakdown. So the pool has 70% B soul, 30% soul. So this would be balanced in accordance to the pool that I'm submitting to. So I'm going to go ahead and deposit this. Boom, boom, boom. And then it's going to give me the liquidity pool token in exchange for the two assets. Okay. So then I'm going to go to farms. Mm -mm. The B soul and soul farm. Going to click on that. I'm going to click on my balance and I'm going to stake the entire thing. Very simple, guys. Very simple. Okay, and what this is doing is it's giving me an extra 1.98% APY on top of the APY I was already getting from simply providing liquidity. So you're double dipping. Beautiful. Okay, so now what we will see here is an unstake function. So if you want to collect your fees and close your position entirely in this liquidity pool. All you gotta do is hit claim the fees. Mm -mm. So from this pool, I'd be earning Blaze, which is the B soul, the stake Solana's uh, governance token. That is the fee that you get out, out of this pool. And so I'm gonna claim those rewards, claim them, boom. And then I'm gonna withdraw the B soul and soul. Just like that. So that is me now taking out the liquidity token of Beesol Soul. So I'm still now going to go have to go back to the pools. So I'm still earning fees, guys, just only on the pool, not with the staked liquidity token. So now I'm going to go back to the pools. You'll see here I still have the deposit. Withdraw. Take it out. So now I'm going to actually get that Solana and Beesol back into my wallet. I'm going to hit withdraw. And there we go. Okay, now we've gone over the dynamic liquidity market makers, the DLMMs. We've gone over the, part, the pool, liquidity pools and the liquidity pool farms. What Meteor also has is dynamic vaults. So what they do is they act as an aggregator. So as you'll see here in the top, they're going to show you the different protocols that they use. They use Vault Reserve, which is their own, MarginFi, Solens, Solens Turbo, Tulip. 
and this shows you the breakdown of where they're placing the assets. So when you go ahead and deposit, so let's do Solana, okay? We are going to lend some Solana. So this is telling you what the APY is on your lend. And let's say we're going to go ahead and lend one soul. Okay, so if I lend one soul, I'll get this VSOL token representing my provision of Solana into the lending pool. Now I'm going to hit deposit. And they give you a nice chart here showing you the APY performance. Right now it's a little lower than it was previously. Oop, transaction expired. Remember, don't worry guys. Let's restart it here. Deposit. Boom, boom. Okay. And now I am lending. Now I'm giving them Solana for them to lend out to the marketplace that is going to give us the highest yield. And if I'm done after some time, I want to trade with my Solana, I want to sell my Solana, whatever I want to do, I just want to get it out of there. I simply just hit withdraw. Click on the balance, and boom, hit withdraw. Okay, this is giving you a hyper education into the financial markets. And you can only really do this in crypto. And that's why it is amazing with protocols like Meteor is doing here. It is giving the average user the ability to be a market maker. So good, good luck in the arena, guys. I hope this was very helpful for you. And the rope stays on.